Hello everyone. Today we are going to design a singly reinforced rectangular beam. Let us read the question and write the given data. Design a singly reinforced rectangular beam of span 4 meter. The clear span is given as 4 meter. It is subjected to a live load of 12 kN per meter. The live load is given as 12 kN per meter. The width of the supports is 230 mm. Use M25 concrete and FE 415 steel. FCK is 25 and FOE is 415. The first step in the design is to assign the size of the beam. We need to open this code book page number 37. The span to depth ratios should not be greater than these three. In the question, the type of the beam is not mentioned. If it is not mentioned, it should be simply supported beam. For that, the ratio should not be more than 20. In this case, we can assume that the ratio is 15. So, the effective depth D will be the span 4000 upon the ratio 15. In this case, we will get 266.67 mm. We can round that to 300 mm. Let us assume that the effective cover is 40 mm. So the overall depth D will be 300 plus 40. We will get 340 mm. And let us assume the width of the beam B as 250 mm. Now we are going to find the effective span. We have to take the page number 34. The effective span of a beam shall be taken as the clear span plus the effective depth or center to center of the supports. The wall thickness is given in the question. Effective depth just before we have calculated. We have to convert both of them into meter. Wall thickness will be 0.23 meter and the effective depth will be 0.3 meter. For clear span plus effective depth we will get 4.3 meter to find the center to center of the supports with the clear span we have to add one wall thickness we will get 4.23 meter from these two we have to select the minimum value 4.23 is the minimum one so the effective span will be 4.23 meter now we are going to find the factored load First, we need to find the dead load. For that, we have to multiply the unit weight of the concrete that is 25 kN per meter cube with the cross-sectional area of the beam. When we multiply these two, we will get the area, but we have to apply the values in meter. 340 millimeter is 0.34 meter and 250 millimeter is 0.25 meter. When we multiply the area with the unit weight of the concrete, we will get the dead load 2.12 kN per meter. The live load is given in the question as 12 kN per meter. To get the total load, we have to add these two. After adding, we will get 14.12 kN per meter. To find the factored load, we have to multiply the total load with 1.5. So we will get 21.19 kN per meter. Now we are going to find the ultimate moment and shear force. Using this formula, we can find the ultimate moment. And using this formula, we can find the ultimate shear force. Now we need to find the limiting moment of resistance. Using this formula, we can find that. Let us see how this formula comes. In the code book from the page number 96, we have to copy this formula. Then we have to take the page number 70. Our FI is 415. For that, XU max upon D is 0.48. So instead of XU max upon D, we have to apply 0.48. In this way, we will get the limiting moment of resistance. Suppose Fe 250 or Fe 500 are given, instead of Xu max upon D, we have to apply 0.53 and 0.46 so that we will get these two formulas. 
let us copy this uh, formula in this uh, formula let us apply all of the values so that we will get this we can divide this by 10 power 6 so that we will get in kilo newton meter mu is less than mu limit so the section is under reinforced now we are going to find the area of the tensile reinforcement in the code book from the page number 96 we can copy this uh, formula in the formula let us apply all of the values so that we will get this equation using a calculator we can solve this equation for AST we will get this alternatively if you can memorize this formula using this formula we can get the AST directly now we have to check whether we have the minimum tension reinforcement in the code book we have to take the page number 46 and 47 we can take this equation we can take BD on the other side so it will come in the numerator using that we can find the AST which is 153 millimeter square but ours is more than that so we can proceed with this AST also we should note that the AST should not exceed 0 0.04 BD let us provide three numbers of 16 millimeter diameter bars so that the area will be 603 millimeter square which is greater than this also let us provide two numbers of 10 millimeter diameter bars as a hanger bars now we are going to apply the check for the shear stress in the code book from the page number 72 we can copy this uh, formula BU is 44.8 kN. We know that 1 kN is 1000. So 44.8 into 1000. And we can apply B and D. For tau V, we will get 0.6. We need to find the percentage of tension steel. The formula is 100 AST upon BD. AST is 603. For PT, we will get 0.8. Now in the code book we have to open page number 73 for 100 AS upon BD we have got 0 0.8 0 0.8 comes between 0.75 and 1 our FCK is M25 so we have to copy these two values by using interpolation we can find tau C for 0.8 this value plus this minus this then this minus this into 0.8 minus 0.75 we will get tau c which is 0.584 we have already calculated tau v which is 0.6 tau v is greater than tau c in this case shear reinforcement is required let us provide two legged 8 millimeter diameter bars so the area for the stirrups will be 2 into pi into 8 square upon 4 we will get 100.53 millimeter square we have to find the spacing of the stirrups from the code book page number 73 we can copy this formula SV is the spacing by modifying the formula we will get this here we need to find BUS that is the strength of the shear reinforcement using this formula we can find that for that we will get 1000 newton in this one we can apply all of the values we will get this you can see that it is a greater value it is not applicable we have got a bigger value because our VUS is less in this case you don't have to do this we can directly use this formula and find the spacing from the code book page number 48 we can copy this formula we can modify this formula so that we will get this after applying all of the values we will get 362 millimeter previously we have calculated this and now we have calculated this out of these two we have to take the minimum value which is 362 millimeter now let us apply the check for spacing our value 362 millimeter then we need to open the code book page number 47 and 48 the spacing should not exceed 0.75 d 
0.75 into effective depth 300 we will get 225 millimeter and in no case the spacing shall not exceed 300 millimeter so out of these three we have to take the minimum value that is 225 millimeter we can round that to 220 millimeter so let us provide two legged 8 millimeter diameter stirrups at the spacing of 220 millimeter now let us apply the check for deflection from the code book page number 38 we can copy this formula in the formula let us apply all of the values we will get 195.94 the percentage of tension reinforcement we have already calculated which is 0.8 from 0.8 we have to make a vertical line this line should be extended little below than the curve fs190 because our value is a little more than that from this point we have to make a horizontal line this point can be taken approximately as 1.24 now in the code book we have to take page number 37 L upon D will be equal to the basic value which is 20 into the modification factor for L we have to apply the effective span length for D we will get 170.56 millimeter which is less than our effective depth 300 millimeter so the beam is safe against deflection here you can see the cross section we have provided three numbers of tensile bars at a 16 millimeter diameter and two numbers of hanger bars at a 10 millimeter diameter and two legged stirrups 8 millimeter diameter at a 220 millimeter center to center now we are going to end this session thank you for watching this video